Um, okay, cool. We are going to have a conversation about hashtags and art and how creatives are using hashtags um, to communicate in the uh, the, the post centralized hashtag Twitter world. <laughs> and I'm uh, Zach Verdon, and I am a co founder of New Hive, and I'm also a hashtag groupie. Uh, I guess I can go next. So <clears throat> I'm Chris Messina. I currently work at Neon Mob, um, which is a marketplace for digital art and collectibles. I also, uh, love it or hate it, uh, was one of the first guys to do hashtags on Twitter, so I'm credited as the inventor and hence hashtag godfather. Um, and so we're putting this together to have an interesting conversation about where this stuff's going and what we're doing. Please. Olaf. My turn. Hi everyone. I don't know if, if I got a tagline on on the on on the air, but I'm Olaf Mate. I'm initiator of this exhibit form called Art Hack Day, where we get together a bunch of arty computer people and uh, artists that are very very computer minded. Um, and uh, on the side, I also make tools to make ebooks. So looking forward to the chat. Nice. Uh, let's see. Paul or Sean, you guys are muted right now. You want to say something about yourselves? Sure. So Paul Berry, uh, I am a founder and CEO of Rebel Mouse, uh, which lets people create websites and ad campaigns and, and enables uh, creators from a hipster in Williamsburg to uh, General <laughs> Electric uh, to bring their content together across, camp uh, across all social networks. Nice. And Sean? And my name is Sean uh, Spurdy. I'm a co-founder of a company called Tagboard at tagboard.com. And similarly, we bring in social media from various source networks into the same view. Um, we anchor with the hashtag. So you, it's basically in its rawest form uh, a hashtag search engine across multiple uh, source social networks. Awesome. Um, it looks like, I guess, Andrew, you've joined. Yeah, I invited Andrew. Okay, cool. So Andrew's on mute. Oh, should we unmute Andrew? Let's see. Um, he might be muted on his end. He may need to hit the... Uh, he might just... He, he actually might just want to listen in. Okay. Um, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, Zach. So why don't we why don't we talk about some stuff here? Let's do it. Um, I'd love to just sort of go around and have everybody just give you know one two minute talk about how you're using hashtags either in your work or personally. Yeah, you know I can start. Um, I think it's it's pretty like relevant. Like I mean, there's like the social media obvious answer, which is, I guess, what I would suggest right now. I mean, I, I left Google um, in early, early August, and I've been doing kind of like the social media marketing, community building um, role at Neon Mob. And for the month of October, we um, did this thing called Neon Monsters, where we essentially were releasing art on our you know, community and through our site um, related to, obviously, like the Monsters theme. We could have gone with, like, hashtag Halloween or, like, hashtag scary, but you know, for me, it's it's important that we build up this brand resonance and we do something that is unique to us and that actually does sort of live in its own space. So, for example, I actually used Tagboard to create a Neon Monsters board, and there was like some random people dressed in neon clothes or something like that. And it was sort of it sort of gets to this point where the hashtag as a platform is great because it's very emergent. It allows anybody to create content that's related to whatever. Um, but for us, we wanted to be able to have a little more control over you know, what was part of that, that corpus of information. And so Tagboard, you know, not to speak too much for Sean, but, like, is one of those interesting immersion platforms that allows me to go in and sort of boost up certain stuff that's relevant to our story, to our narrative, to what we're doing, and then to aggregate these things. And right now it was largely from our own set of content. Hello, my friend. Nice to meet you. How do you do today? Hi. Hey, my friend. How do you do? That's great. Okay, see you later. Um, it, this is a, a work in progress. Um, 
anyways, as I was saying. So sometimes you get content that uh, you hadn't <laughs> encountered or counted on, um, and you want to find a way of doing something with it, I guess. And um, <laughs> sorry, that's why we provide uh, curation <laughs> and moderation controls on tax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Sean, why don't you tell us about people who are doing it well? <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, it's something that just recently came up in, fact, in a conversation today regarding hashtags, and I, it was kind of a, a new angle uh, to look at them. Um, we've always, I think, you know, everyone here, uh, probably um, hashtag groupie like yourself, Zach, but... Um, I hadn't thought of it this way until today. I was having a conversation, and it occurred to me, um, it really kind of comes down to, for, particularly for um, when we're talking about marketing and marketers, getting a message across, uh, you know, what, whether it's increased visibility or, um, you know, you, you, you want your brand um, discovered, either more visible or discovered, um, it comes down to call to action especially when it comes to uh, social media, right? You, you can spend ad dollars and just get your name out there, but if you want to embrace social media and you're looking at ways to do that, the hashtag being one of the mechanisms, it comes down to as simple as it's the call to action now. Um, and look no further than Super Bowl ads um, of this past year. Uh, but you'll see it everywhere now where marketers are learning to replace the uh, URL or the social icons with now, and, and before, I mean, there was all kinds of experiments with QR codes, etc., and now it's uh, the hashtag. And so, and so I think we just lost him. Well, to, to finish this thought yeah. and build on that a little bit, um, I think it's interesting because, you know, links sort of implied that you would open them up in your web browser, and yet hashtags sort of are a little more nebulous, right? It's like, use them in content, or search for them on Twitter, search for them. I mean, you can try to search for them in Google, but you're not going to get a whole bunch of stuff. Um, post content. Um, so I'm curious, you know, maybe to hear from, like, you know, Paul or Olaf, you know, on uh, this idea of, like, calls to action associated with, um, with hashtags, whether that's part of, like, the art that you guys create or whether you see that being sort of, like, the trend. Right. I, I love that you bring up the notion of hashtags being nebulous, because one of the things, contrary to URLs, right, is that they're actually not necessarily unique. They're often highly ambiguous in terms of what they mean and what they stand for. Totally. Uh, and I'd be happy to I could like dive into a bunch yeah, of yeah, examples. Yeah, yeah. Give, give some examples about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could do a ton, and I'm sure Zach can too. So recently we did an uh, Art Hack Day exhibit in Berlin, and the theme for that exhibit was going dark. Mm -hmm. So we used the hashtag going dark for all of our like social media or communication and things like that. Now, the funny thing about going dark as a hashtag was obviously the theme was a lot about how you kind of avoid surveillance and you know like the interplay of light and darkness and art, things like that. The funny thing, if you go on Twitter and search for what people mean by going dark, they do mean, like, hey, I'm going to go dark, I'm going to vanish from the internet, like, I'm going on vacation for two weeks, hashtag going dark. Like, implied I won't be reachable. Hmm. But probably 70% of tweets online about going dark is people who just dyed their hair dark. <laughs> and they're like, how do you like this new look? Hashtag going dark with, like, a link to an Instagram picture of them having dyed their hair. Which is, like... I actually ended up doing an artwork with Dean Hunt um, specifically addressing this, uh, this fact where we did kind of a selfie mirror where we wrote going dark in a pixelated font where each pixel was actually a person who had colored his or her hair dark uh, just as like, just to play on the theme of going dark in a very, very playful way. Uh, so there are a lot of ways in, the, in which they're like kind of out of the control of, of marketers in a sense. I love that, that there's like such a good dichotomy, too, where it's like going dark as in getting offline, going you know rogue, going away from these things, and yet yeah. these other people are like, oh, like I dyed my hair, I'm going dark, here's a big selfie of myself, and I'm going to blast it out on the internet so everyone can see, right? Right. It's like the there's completely opposite. divergent goals and, and intentions, and right. this is probably where like, you know, you've seen some of those hashtags just like backfire, like, you know, but McDonald's tastes like dot, dot, dot. And then you can imagine how people fill in the blank. Right. Um, but you know that's sort of interesting. Um, 
Paul, what about you? You want to jump in and talk about some of your experiences? Yeah, yeah well, it's interesting because we are um, <clears throat> we're trying to balance and be a public. Uh oh. <laughs> the, the assumption is that you know before doing Rebel Mouse, I CTO of Huffington Post. Uh, you're going dark for a moment there. Is this uh, are we? Is it working? Yeah. Um, so I, before Rebel Mouse, uh, do you guys hear me or? <laughs> so every time you say Rebel Mouse, yeah. you're like. So uh, so anyway. <laughs> Oh God, Google Hangouts. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are hearing or not hearing. Keep Just going. don't say so, Rebel Mouse. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that, that's it's like keyworded. It so, really is. So, <laughs> it's great. Um, so anyway, we're trying to help individuals, but also marketers. And the, and the basic assumption is that content is being created across not just one network, but all of these together. And so it, we are helping marketers. It is really interesting. If you get too careful and unique with your hashtag, it has uh, it gets really too boring, too. So um, it, there's this tension between hijacking a word where you have no chance, where that meaning is not, you're not going to own it. Uh, and um, and creating something that's so unique and so boring that it's impossible to type and remember and etc. So, a recent one that was interesting is we helped BurgerKing.com with they did with their new French fries. They did WTFF as the hashtag. Wait a second! I saw those hashtags all over New York's like <laughs> sidewalks. Yes, those were yours. So, so well. It wasn't our idea, it was their campaign, but what <laughs> I liked about what we did for them is that... Where are the french fries? That's it, what that stands for? It's, it's what the french fry is their <laughs> interpretation. The, the oh interesting thing is if you read it, if you try to read that hashtag on any one network, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and it's full of profanity and everything. But if you go to the bk.com site, there's amazing content. Like there's this Instagram star that did a 12 foot French fry, and he and he broke, and he took a picture of himself on the beach. And some dude did like an eight foot fry in the subway. <laughs> and so you know, if you assume that you, I mean, basically, I think we live in a world where you have to assume you don't have control. Uh, and then you can begin to put together the content that you that supports your mission that you can endorse and embrace uh, and pull that together into your own space but let these conversations happen without control and across all these networks uh, and so it's amazing like at HuffPost we had tags were insanely important to organize the content and uh, with hashtags, there's that unified system that works across Vine to every other network. Uh, and so there's a tremendous potential to fail and, uh, and to find cool uh, opportunities. Right. Yeah. Just spinning. Uh, Sorry. Oh, no, no the, I'm actually sort of curious about, you know, stepping into the mind of, of the people that are using these products and these, like, platforms um, to communicate. Like, is there a right way or a wrong way to use a hashtag? Um, you know, one of the things that sort of always I always laugh at when I see it is somebody says, you know, oh, I went to the beach and I had a really nice day, and then they have hashtag I, hashtag went, hashtag the, hashtag beach, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I've always sort of thought of the hashtag as, you know, you sort of you come up with the idea or the, the piece of content that you're trying to create, and that sort of has all these ideas and, and thoughts sort of embedded into it, and that the hashtag really sort of acts as a frame. It's almost like when I post content, I, only only ha I usually only use just one hashtag, um, and I'm just sort of curious on, on how you guys think about that. When you're posting content, should people use multiple hashtags? Does it help our cases if people are using just one and they're more specific with the hashtags they're using? Um. Yeah, did we lose Sean? <coughs> or who else wants to take that? I mean, I, I love the stream of consciousness hashtags. <laughs> Those are the best. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Especially the drop yeah. tags. You They're, mean like the actual con- the tag stream of, con- of consciousness? Or? No, when it's like <laughs> multiple hashtags, like uh, whatever. It's like Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> just, uh, just you know, you know like JT just thing. had a fight with my boyfriend, you know, right. hashtag FML, hashtag uh, needy, hashtag, right. you know, flowers, <laughs> whatever. Like... Hashtag anyone free. Well, it's yeah. funny because we actually have, so, I mean, you know, one of the things we're doing at New Hive is we're trying to actually make it so that hashtags sort of take center stage in terms of, like, the connective tissue of the network. So we've actually built in these tag pages where you can, people can start a tag page, they can add to tags, you can follow these tag pages, and we'll populate people's feeds based on the tags that they're following. And then we also let the people that are starting these tag pages sort of curate them. Um, and so stream of consciousness is actually a pretty popular tag on New Hive <laughs> uh, that, that, that people actually use quite often. Um, yeah, I loved how you interpreted that literally, Zach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that's sort of where, I, I mean, I think that's part of the sort of how you filter out the signal from the noise with these hashtags. If hashtags are going to become a central sort of organizational tool, then that means that people have to, um, you know, what are the conventions? Like, what are the right versus wrong ways of using them? Or does that not even exist? Yeah. I, I mean, I, Paul, you, or, you, you, you go, Paul. I'll turn in afterwards. So I think there are many more wrong ways to use them than right ways. Yes. Like the abuse metric on uh, I, we, the pre-hangout, I was telling Chris he should be equal parts uh, proud and ashamed of the hashtag. <laughs> Uh, because it is, I, I think that for an example of a great usage for me is the, I forget exactly the hashtag, but it was add a word, ruin a movie. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. All those movie, like the movie titles are awesome. And for me, those things are fantastic because you're uniting at the same time a concept for people to have a real creative conversation around and the way to find that conversation. And uh, doing hashtag beach is not going to do it. Um, and, and there's this, like, I guess it's what, um, it, the opposite of SEO is SEM, right? So this, like, they're trying to op- it's optimize for social and they want their posts to be seen as many places. So they're, and those types of optimizations to have your content found like that is ho- generally horrible. But where it's used as an anchor for a concept that unites the conversation is awesome. And I think we're kind of in the early days where it's like we've invented the wheel, but it's still made of stone. And people are still not even realizing you can roll it. Like, they're still toppling it over. So we have a long way to go. And I don't know if networks are going to be able to solve this, uh, the spam abuse, et cetera. Right. Yeah, so actually, so Kyle uh, just joined us. He's um, from Everlaps and um, Seesaw. And these guys, like, you know, use... Wait, wait, what? Did I miss something? I just said hi. Oh, hi. Um, and and so Andrew's guys, here, too. Yeah, right. So, and so, you know, those, those guys are using, like, hashtags for a bunch of different things, for organizing content on our network. And, you know, I was wondering... You know, Kyle, given, like, your experience, what kind of things do you guys do to, like, optimize the experience of people clicking through, seeing content related to tags, getting the best stuff to bubble up? Like, is there a ranking thing in there, or is it just most recent, you know? Right now, uh, it's most recent. Uh, we've, and with Everlaps, we also added categories alongside of hashtags. Um, you know, I, sorry I'm late here. I'm sure I missed a lot of the the good points, but um, with hashtags, it's really hard to get users to create good hashtags. Um, they are all over the map, like you guys were just talking about. People are, you know, spamming. Uh, they're they're writing all kinds of things that just doesn't make sense, and it makes it hard to actually find good content. And so we opted for going with categories alongside to kind of group things up. And and we do use hashtags in some ways to. Um, algorithmically do that. So if things are starting to trend, we'll start to group those up, and then we'll um, create the the category out of those groupings. But um, you know, with with Everlaps, you know, that's only been around for a couple months now, so we're not doing too many uh, too many things that are uh, really dynamic there. 
uh, it's a fun challenge, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, hey, so sp speaking of grouping hashtags, I, I just have a pretty fun fun example of that, perhaps just to bring to bear. Uh, I just find it, find it interesting as we speak about grouping of hashtags, we often think about just grouping one hashtag, but you can actually end up in really funny situations if you combine two different types of hashtags, and they're all, like, you can expose, like, meaning that was previously hidden to people. So just a wonderful example of this, there was this work of art at Art Hack Day San Francisco called OK Kill Me, which was a matchmaking service where they combined people who had tweeted the hashtag ready to kill with people who had who had tweeted the hashtag ready to die. <laughs> so they were like, hey guys, you should meet, kind of thing. And obviously they were shut down by Twitter, but it's just like, if you go on Twitter and search for ready to kill, it's like, things are just like, hey, someone just stole my lunch from the office fridge, hashtag ready to kill. And then it's like, on the ready to die one, it's like, I had to get up at 6 a.m. this morning. I'm so tired. Hashtag ready to die. Kind kill of thing. me now. So yeah, so, kill me now. Kind of thing. So it's just like so these the wonderful. So many missed connections between uh, between people there. But I so think Kyle, it just. Sorry, Olaf. Yeah, go ahead. No, I no it just it, yeah, it just it just speaks to like all these like hidden meanings and hidden conversations that actually could be could be taking place across hashtags too. So, uh, Kyle, with Everlapse, you guys made the decision to build in hashtags at the beginning. Um, did, did you take some of these use cases into account, combining hashtags and what that might happen, what might that might do, et cetera? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. This is uh, new, new, new fodder for you, Kyle. No, I, you know, the, the way that we did it was through categories, and, and a lot of it was just manual work uh, at, at the very beginning. Um, again, it's only been around a couple months, and it was born out of a hash, Hack Week project where really, you know, we wanted to get the first version out the door as quick as possible. Um, the ideas of, like, grouping hashtags and, you know, the, the, the one that you just brought up with the, you know, <laughs> uh, kill me now thing is just, you know, th those are great examples of the interesting things that you can do. Um, you know, with Seesaw, it was, hashtags made a lot of sense. You know, it's, um, Apple uh, is one of our, you know, more popular hashtags. It's, you know, Apple versus Android, or, um, uh, you know, technology or tech was another popular one. And the, that's a way where you can just hit a hashtag and pull up all kinds of polls around the various topics. I think you know Polar is doing a great job of that, uh, revealing that on their their website, um, on their web app, I guess. Um, so didn't think about it too much. Um, yeah. It's interesting. So I want to jump to uh, and welcome Summer um, as well. Hi, Summer. Uh, right now you're muted. You might have an unmute button somewhere in there. Hi um, guys. Hey, perfect. Um, so Summer worked on Photo Swirl. I don't know what you're doing now. But I thought that given like the idea of Photoswirl pulling together tweets and Instagram content through hashtags was like really interesting and relevant, and that it'd be sort of useful to sort of talk about, and maybe a little bit of like the juxtaposition of two different networks coming together in a spontaneous way, or just what you sort of saw and what was you know what worked with Photoswirl, what didn't work, and and any other like learnings that you had from that. Sure. Um... Yeah, the main reason I wanted to make it is that because I saw so many of my friends trying to tag sort of different life events like, you know, weddings or birthdays or even vacations um, on a lot of different networks, so including Foursquare, Twitter, and Instagram. And I really wanted a way to kind of do data visualization and show them everything that was going on. So it wasn't really actually meant to be just photos, but we did that as kind of a minimum viable product. Um, and yeah, so one of the things, it's similar to Tagboard when I was looking at Tagboard, but the difference is that you can sort everything by just your network or anyone else in their network. So, you know, if I tag something Christmas, for example, and I go onto Instagram, I'll see millions and millions of pictures. And I like the idea of just being able to search Christmas for me and my friends or someone else's network and sort of seeing it through their eyes. And I thought a hashtag was an interesting way um, to do that. So. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of the background behind it. Um, but yeah, we had a mobile app. We actually just pulled it from the App Store. Um, oh, thank God I got like it. Like a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, the mo we'll be, uh, this, site, this site's still up, but after Twitter changed you know, their API, we basically um, 
it was just too broken to leave up there. So yeah, I'm working on a new product at Betaworks now, but uh, we do a lot of that here. We try a bunch of different things and see what takes off. And um, yeah, it had a good run, but it didn't quite blow up like we wanted it to. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have like any uh, fundamental learnings about the way that people interacted with it, or whether they understood as you did, kind of like the pan network aspect of like tagging content, or was that you know, like you know what I mean? Yeah, I um, I think the main thing we had from a lot of people, like we had museums and a lot of other people that really really liked the UI and wanted to use it. One of the biggest issues with it was um, that we didn't have all of Instagram. So if I could go back and do it again, I would. <laughs> you know, try to scrape all of Instagram like a lot of these other services are doing, but that's also hard to do uh, and just show your network, right? Like we can't, we clearly can't get all of Twitter and all of the fire hose, but um, that's what a lot of people wanted that we couldn't really offer was, was everything. Um, most of the people using it understood hashtags, right? Because, you know, if you logged in, you were already a hashtag user. Almost. When I would talk to people about it too, I would tell them that hashtag is kind of like the... Um, when you go to a movie, it used to be like MySpace at the end of it, right? And then it's like follow us on Facebook, and all of a sudden now every single film I see, it's hashtag. They don't even mention a network at all. It's just search whatever you like by a hashtag. Um, so I thought, all right, well maybe we can be a place where we pull in all the networks, and you can sort of see like a visualization of what's going on everywhere. Um, and that would be pretty cool. It's like music to Sean's ears. Sean's been like <laughs> talking about like how uh, the hashtag is like the new URL, the new AOL keyword, the new whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that does sound like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> there was something interesting along those lines with um, Everlaps that we, we made a couple technical prototypes for, but never actually released. Um, which was, you know, we launched this Instagram highlights reel thing where you would just click that. a button and it would create your Instagram highlights reel, top 20 liked. Uh, Instagram photos. Do you want to explain actually Everlaps real quick because I think that's important. Yeah, so Ever Everlaps is basically uh, collaborative flipbooks. Um, you can go on, post it, it'll go anywhere. You know, it's a Twitter card implementation and it's literally like a flipbook. I can scrub it back and forth and um, control it. Like, they're like stacks of photos that are like thematic. So if I like create right. like a letter stack then like other people create photos of B, C, D, whatever. And they add it into my my Everlaps, I guess. And so you can sort of pan through it. It's, I mean, it's essentially the stack is like a hashtag in that way, which, which is kind of an interesting, you know. Exactly. And so like one of the things that we explored was, you know, there's tons of people who have their outfit of the day, right? Your OOTD hashtag, and uh, basically just typing in a hashtag that would pull in all of the photos from just your account to start um, that were tagged that you know outfit of the day and pull them in. Um, I just posted in the group chat, uh, you know, this, this is my daughter Hannah. This is a daily Hannah one. So, like, it gives you the basic idea. Um, think photo vine or, uh, uh, or Cute. pick two, but just um, in a video format that plays through. Um, so it's very, you know, there's a lot of possibilities where, you know, you could type in, in theory, just like you guys did with uh, photo swirl, type in... Um, a hashtag and kind of pull together all of the photos from that hashtag into one uh, yeah. clip. But did you ever see that? Um, uh, I think it's Jacob Lodwick that did it, where you could pull in your entire Flickr stream and it made a movie out of it. P Pummel Vision. Did you see Pummel Vision? I didn't see Pummel Vision. Um, there was who else did it? There, there was a couple others that did something similar. Uh, yeah, people, one of the things with Swirl I liked is people definitely tag their children. So, like, the, from the moment they're born, a lot of people don't just give them an email address but a hashtag. And so you can see, like, if you think about, you know, all these different platforms will sort of start up and then go away, but if a tag continues to exist throughout the years, then people can take the tag and scrape from all these different services and pull it all together, and that would be kind of a neat way to pull it all, see everything. That's just hilarious, given, like, all the potential complications with hashtags and uniqueness we just spoke about to do that. <laughs> well, but it's, it, it, again, it goes back to like the filtering problem, right? Like yeah. the context, whether it's your context, a shared context, group context. Like right. in some ways it's interesting to see various apps or photo sharing like, like these mediums sort of shutting down without the ability to export a lot of the additional metadata that we've added or created on top of them. Like Everpix shutting down is really sad because you can get your data out but it's going to lose all of the aggregation that it was done where it's like, oh, these are all your food photos. These are all your sunset photos. 
And like the photo formats that exist today are just sort of really sparse in their ability to represent that stuff. So at least if there is a way to include some text, whatever hashtags, like it's I don't know, there's something something there. Um, I know Andrew hasn't spoken yet. Andrew, do you do you want to contribute? Hi. Hey. There you go. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have anything to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, the only thing that I keep thinking of uh, with all of this is um, how entertaining it is when people, when the sort of naive usage of hashtags, um, like when my mom, uh, when like when Facebook started adding hashtags to status updates, um, it was like my mom would like you know use hashtags as like this sort of alternate voice um, in her status updates. Um, and I think, like, I saw a lot of that on Twitter as well um, for a long time. It's like the hashtag became this sort of alternate, secondary, kind of ironic voice following whatever people were saying. It's the little voice in your head. It's the subtext, the stuff that used to go on the <laughs> parentheticals, you know? And My mom really, would do a at dad because she didn't understand how at works, so she thought <laughs> if she did at dad that he would get the message. <laughs> Actually, that's you know, great. that's both hilarious and, like, super sad because <laughs> I, oh, my God, uh, let me just vent for, like, two seconds. Like, when people post stuff on Instagram, they don't understand how, like, mentioning works. So they mention at Chris and then some last name because they can't find their friend in Instagram. And then they cross-post to Twitter, which, of course, expands, because I'm Chris on Instagram, to Chris and Cena. So I get all of these mentions and all these crazy photos of people probably not thinking that me, this weird guy, is seeing them smoking pot or doing whatever at the party and, like, whatever else is going on because it turns out that mentions are too hard, which breaks my brain in, like, the most fundamental way and yet makes me also sort of hopeful that there's still work to be done in, like, social media to, like, make the stuff easier and more accessible to people. And, like, hashtags are not the worst offender, it turns out. I kind of find all of that, like, sort of, like, those missed um, connections or sort of the, the naive usage of these things, like, it mm -hmm. almost creates these, like, possibilities for a serendipitous um, experience totally. that you wouldn't have had otherwise, you know? Like, it's like, it's like, oh, I accidentally mentioned the wrong person. It's like now all of a sudden I have this conversation going with someone who I didn't really intend to have a conversation with. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, I remember for a long time... Yeah. Like, I was, I was following this one guy on Twitter for a really long time and having whole conversations with him, thinking that he was this artist that I had worked with before. <laughs> and uh, after, like, a year, I finally discovered that, like, he was this teenager in London. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so then what? Then, like, what yeah. happened to the actual artist? Was he, was he, had he gone dark? Well, he just had never, he didn't actually have a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like official Snowden, right? You just like have a yeah. conversation with a guy. Uh, um, all right, so I'm very aware that we're running up on our yeah. on our time. Um, this was both technically deficient, but also a good learning experience. And by that, I mean that we had no idea how the hell to run this hangout in the beginning, but it sort of worked out in the end. So um, yeah, I, there's a lot. I thought I feel this like was fun. You guys, go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's there's so much more that we could have covered. I mean, just our focus on this conversation was really around using hashtags online, but, Paul, you sort of referred to it when you were talking about the hashtag WTFF and how it was sort of connecting the di digital to the analog, and, you know, that's something that, you know, at, at New Hive that we're really excited about. We just did this upload campaign where we had artists around the world that were submitting content that was tagged upload, but it was also used to, to do a physical installation here, here in San Francisco. And so sort of using hashtags as a way to blur the lines between the analog and the digital is this whole other world that would be fun to talk about at some other point. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to look at this link from Paul about catching Carmen. Cool. Um, anybody else? Do you guys want anything else to say to wrap up? Uh, I'll just say that I love that you put this together, Chris. Yeah. And I'll all of its imperfections on finding out the way through Google Hangouts was uh, was fun. It somehow <laughs> reflects on the state of hashtags. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like we're trying to use one network. Can't even figure it out. And it's just uh, it's great to to see all of you guys. I hope, I, I hope we make it something we do regularly. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, any any last thoughts? So I'm off. See you guys online. Fa favorite right. hashtags. I think we should end with your favorite hashtag. Uh, yeah. Anybody? 
Uh, mine's really not really. Hashtag really not really. It's like sorry um, not sorry. Yeah, exactly. But it's sort of if you if you look at that that thread, it's usually um, like teenagers that okay. sort of you know I like you know um, some band really not really, and I like to put sort of like more serious sort of like thought provoking ideas and then tag it really not really. Nice. I um, think mine is can't date if. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that was one. That was one of mine too. <laughs> I think mine is probably just simply hashtag go Seahawks. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Uh, Olaf? Yeah, mine was the can't data, if oh, I think. Use that one. Okay, yeah. Kyle? Great. Ah, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, what was the uh, lyrics you need to shout one? That was a good one. Oh. I'm trying to look for it. Yeah. I don't know. Summer? Mine's a stuff on Elle's head, which I just put into the chat. It's my friend that balances stuff on her dog's head, basically, like, everything you can yeah. imagine. She has a whole awesome set of it, so check that one out. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Andrew? No? Okay. Uh, you know, mine was probably the hashtag brought to life by a friend of mine who went as a hashtag for Halloween, and I don't know how to say that, but uh, that was awesome. Anyways, all right, this is great, guys. Um, thanks so much. Um, this will be put up on YouTube, and then we'll figure out, you know, if, when, how we do this again. All right? Awesome. Great. All right. All right, thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Good to meet you guys. See ya. See ya.